back to Cambo Kitchen, everybody. Today we're going to learn how to make bucatini cacio e pepe. Bucatini is like a very thick spaghetti noodle with a hole in the center. Boil it for 10 minutes. Make sure that it's al dente. You don't want it overcooked. One of the beautiful things about bucatini is that even if it is overcooked, it still has a very good chew. As with every noodle that I cook, I take a piece, bite it in half, and I check the center to make sure that it's still a little bit underdone. That's exactly what you want. You want to finish cooking in the pot. Add your noodles to a medium-sized pot and make sure that you add a few ladles of the pasta water. That contains very important starch that's going to help with the sauce. Add two or three tablespoons of butter and turn the heat to high. You want to boil it vigorously. When you boil it, the starch is going to emulsify with the water and the butter and it's going to form a sauce. That's crucial. Make sure that you're continuing to stir. That releases the starch from the pasta and gives you a very beautiful sauce. Keep the heat to high until the sauce is almost finished reducing. You can tell it's starting to stick to the noodle. The sauce is looking thick and creamy. You're ready to add your pepper and cheese. Very important, turn the heat off before you add the pepper and the cheese. If you leave the heat on high while adding those ingredients, one, you're going to have basically a pepper stock, which is not so pleasant. And two, the cheese gets kind of weird and doesn't emulsify with the noodle, and the sauce looks kind of weird if you just keep the heat on high. Now remember, the name of this pasta is cacio e pepe, cheese and pepper. You want to add a lot of pepper. You want to make sure that it's noticeable, that it's pungent, and that it's strong. If you don't like pepper, I don't recommend this pasta, but you are allowed to add less pepper if you'd like, although it's not as delicious. Now time to add your Pecorino Romano. You want to add a lot of Pecorino Romano depending upon how many people you're serving. I like to use half a cup per person, especially when I'm using a microplane. The cheese is not very dense, so half a cup really isn't that much. It's like a big handful. As you can see, when I stir, 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 that sauce really clings to the noodle and it all just kind of comes together and forms a really, really delicious, beautiful pasta. It's crucial that you stir, stir, stir. That releases the starch, it emulsifies the cheese with the water, the butter kind of gets in there and gets creamy, and it just makes everything beautiful just like that. It's so good, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Not watery, but not too thick. If it is a little thick, just add a little more pasta water, not a big deal. And if it's a little thin, you can always add a little bit more cheese. Now it's time to plate up. Grab yourself a bowl, and place a great big scoop of pasta right in the center, giving it a nice little twist. And as you can see, that sauce has really clinged to those noodles, and it's gonna be so delicious. When you eat it, you get a bunch of that buttery, peppery, cheesy sauce. So good. Finish with a little freshly grated Pecorino Romano right on top. And this is basically the OG, original mac and cheese pasta. So good and it's really easy, it's really quick to make. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week.